We, uh, Ralph Suter is my name, and uh, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, as a twin. And ten I was minutes. born right next to him, but I came first. My name is Lou. So he is uh, 10 minutes older, but I'm 10 minutes smarter, so we're even. <laughs> and so it's wonderful indeed to see how the Lord has seen fit through the years. Uh, we gave our hearts to the Lord when we were just eight years of age at mother's knee. And God put a love in our hearts for each other that was not there before. And uh, as the, when just 10 and 11 years of age, we began gathering boys and girls in the basement of our home, and we began sharing the gospel with them, having children's meetings, and the Lord was using all that to call us into the ministry when we were 16 years of age. We said, Amen, Lord, we are ready. And as uh, high school seniors, we gave our lives to full-time Christian service to walk with God. And we started holding revival crusades when we were 16 years of age. As seniors in high school. And it was even among the black people of North Carolina that gave us an opportunity to, to preach. And it was thrilling how that God used that to impact our lives and to prepare us for everything else God had for us. I mean, where there were no street lights, no electricity, no roads, there were paths and trails, and there we were. There we were, no roads, no paths, but the people wanting oil lanterns, but hearts ready. That's where we started preaching. And God was using all that to prepare us for what he had in mind for us for the rest of our life, to be twin brothers together in ministry, now in our 56th year together, and uh, having been in a number of countries, and to see how God has used even the, the, the beauty of having twins to be used of God in such a way that God, now in his sovereignty, has put that all together so, in a way in which we could have never done for his honor and for his glory. Amen to that, Lou. Amen. And God changed our ministry. We came out. It was just evangelism. And God changed it into the ministry of revival to the inner life of the body of Christ. And it's amazing. Well, what is revival? Well, I can say to you that revival is what God longs for every one of us to have. What is it? It is Christ himself becoming real to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's an understanding that we can't live the Christian life. Not a one of us can do it. Only as we walk in the Spirit can the Spirit of God reveal Christ in all of his glory. But what makes that happen? Lou, what makes that happen? Well, I, I say somebody said revival is when God gets so tired of being misunderstood and misinterpreted that he decides to show up himself. Well, you know who said that, Lou? That was Leonard Ravenhill that made that statement. Why do you, why do you say that? Well, when God shows up, we see the character of God, the holiness of God, and who God is, and then we see ourselves for who we really are, and then we thank God that there was a cross, and that there was a salvation, and there was God's remedy for our sinful condition in the light of who He is. And uh, well, that's repentance. And we've had too many decision-making kind of crusades, and we have been waiting, and uh, the church needs real conversions instead of just decisions. Decisions, they make them today, and the three months later, you don't even know where the people are. But when there's true conversion, there are people who want to go with God, and we see that happening. And when God's people come to life, uh, there's no telling how the outside world can be so affected. And we but, have seen that in place after place after place. And God has sent people after they've been touched in crusades like this, he sent them four and five hundred miles to go to churches to give testimony of how uh, a new spring of joy and reality of God became theirs instead of just a little form of ceremonial Christianity. But Lou, revival is when believers go back to the cross. There are some of us who went to the cross to be saved and have not been back to the cross since then. It's living our life at the foot of the cross that makes all the difference in the world when we are open for God to sharpen the focus of who he is in our hearts and lives so that now we can walk with God Amen. at a full level. Amen. Uh, God gave us the privilege to be in Western Canada just holding a crusade in a church. And as we were holding this crusade in the church, the Holy Spirit of God came on the scene in a little church of 190 people on the first night. And it, it grew We stayed for seven weeks there. And uh, we end up with 4,000 people in the Civic Auditorium with the glory of God coming down on the whole city. So maybe we can talk a little about that and uh, share uh, what God did in those days of revival. And, you know, it's wonderful to see that because that happened in the middle of the winter. It happened with uh, people who, though they were not planning to be involved in a revival, 
understood that God was doing something in the city and they wanted to be a part of it. And one church after another would dismiss their services and be a part of it. And it was wonderful, not just the crowds, Mm -hmm. but what God was doing in touching, transforming people's lives. Marvelous. Somebody said revival is when hidden springs spring forth. And uh, in that city, there was one pastor that God just laid a burden for revival on his heart in such a way. He even got other pastors to come together and pray. But very specially, God shut him away for six months to quit doing the pastoral work of a pastor's uh, ministry in a church and to concentrate on intercessory praying for revival. And he'd let the assistant pastor and the other folks uh, pick up what uh, he wasn't doing and even if it fell flat, didn't matter. And then he was calling for extra prayer meetings after the prayer meeting on Wednesday night for people who want to stay behind and pray for revival. And then in the Sunday schools, he was telling people, let's start praying for revival and teaching on uh, prayer and prayer for revival. And uh, then the Lord brought us together with him to start a a crusade that was scheduled for just uh, 10 or 12 days in a little Baptist church with 190 people. And within two or three nights, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to one of the leading ladies of the church. She was the deacon's uh, elder, deacon, I don't know which one in that church. It was a deacon. Deacon's wife. And uh, the Holy Spirit of God said to her, uh, Irma, quit praying for revival in Canada. This was in Western Canada. Quit praying for revival in Canada when you can't even get along with your pastor's wife. And you get right with your, your pastor's wife before you start praying for revival in Canada. And the Holy Spirit of God broke that woman, and she went and was restored uh, with her pastor's wife. And that started the the ball rolling, as it were. And one after another, reconciliation between brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, even physical brothers who hadn't talked to each other for two and three years. In fact, uh, two brothers were going to the same church. And because of what happened, one decided, I've got to go to a different church And we saw God bring those brothers together and saw them sing a duet in the revival uh, as a result of a testimony of what God did. And And, and one of those brothers was Irma's husband. And it was wonderful to see how God began to work. And as a result of it, uh, the newspaper picked up the story. The television programs were picking up the story. And the newspaper reported on the headlines, morality in the wake of a revival. And when we talked to the editor, said, why did you say that? Why did you write that? Well, he said, I'm getting phone calls from all over the city of people who are making things right one with another, of people who are going to department stores and making things right. In fact, even the the police department called and said that nighttime crime is at an all-time low. What's going on in the city? A revival was taking place, and the impact of that has traveled around the world. And that's what brings us even now to a conference here in Lilburn, Georgia, Conference on Revival, being sponsored by Sermon Index. And what a thrill to see what it is God is doing. Uh, Someone has said, when the fire of revival gets in your bones, the smoke never leaves your clothes. You're never the same. You can't put up with business as usual once you begin to see God work at that level. And would to God that we'd all get that kind of a hunger to believe God for what he longs to do in your community, in your heart, in your life, in your home, in your family, in your church, and then churches together, one making right one with another where there have been broken relationships even between churches. That's what happened in the city of Saskatoon where this all happened. And it was thrilling to see. In the midst of the winter, snow all over the place, and yet it wouldn't stop people. And God has seen fit to use that to affect people's lives around the world. And I was thinking, Ralph, as you are talking about that, I was thinking of how God used human instruments uh, to make, if I say, spiritual decisions Um, that are out of the uh, normal, out of the ordinary. And because of those decisions, we are here today to talk about what we're talking about. Well, give us us one. Well, in in the context that we were in this little Baptist church, and there was a a large church, the largest evangelical church in the city of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, that was going to have its big missionary convention for a solid week. They already had missionaries had arrived for the convention. They had already rented the Jubilee Auditorium for the big closing rally and paid a lot of money to rent the auditorium and all of those things. And somebody called the pastor and said, Pastor, a revival is breaking out in in the Baptist church across town. Are we going to let our missionary convention stand in the way of what God could be doing in the whole city? 
And God led that pastor to go to his board, and they canceled a missionary convention and said, we've got to be part of this that God is doing in the city. When we think in terms of revival, whoever might be watching today might be asking, well, what, what are some of the ingredients necessary? Well, one is humility. That's where it starts. You see, in, uh, it, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, will pray. Is that no, what it says, Lou? No, no. Humble themselves first. That's it. You see? And we talk about, well, we need a day of prayer. We need a national day of prayer. But what about a national day of humbling, of dealing with our pride, the spirit of pride that makes all the difference in the world? So even before we can pray, there's a sin problem, and it's the basic root sin. It's the spirit of pride. And most of us Christians don't have that problem, do we? Uh, no, no, not at all, I'm sure. But then the idea of humbling themselves, really, that is a recognition of who God is. That's seeing God for his holy character, and that's the basis of our humility. And then it says, and then we pray. Now when we come to praying. The tragedy, I say, in relation to our praying is most of us are unbelieving believers when we pray. Uh, most of us uh, don't even realize that we have the spirit of unbelief when we pray. And we're seeing that so many times that when God has answered prayer, uh, people say, oh my, I didn't believe God could ever do that. Yes. Unbelieving believers. And so in revival, we begin to see not only God blessing us, but things begin to happen that we say, oh, that's more than just a blessing. It's a supernatural work of God, the divine work of God. And then, of course, turning from our wicked ways... And then, you guess what? Then God begins to do what he longs to do. In opens all his ears. Opens his ears. I will hear. And, and then I will heal. Amen. And I will do what I need to do to bring us into a right relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of life. And I can tell you that when we begin to get hungry for that, that's what has to happen. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then God begins to do that divine work that's in right. our lives. And you know, one preacher who went, one preacher went to a church that has over 2,000 people on prayer meeting night, and he said to, to this pastor, he said, why do you go to, why do you have 2,000 people? How can you get them? And he said, wouldn't you go to prayer meeting if you believed God answered prayer? Yes. 